Inna lillah, we belong to Allah. Wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. And to him we are constantly returning. How are you returning to him when he's already with you? You are returning to him meaning you are attaining greater consciousness of him. Even this famous hadith, you know, the, the hadith of Kanzul Makhfiya, when we say, why did Allah create anything? And we say, Allah says, I was a hidden treasure. Hadith Al-Qudsi, right? Kuntu Kanzam Makhfiya. I was a hidden treasure and I wanted to be known. So I created a creation, likai u'araf, so that I may be known. Then we ask this question from our small egoic minds. Why does Allah want to be known? He doesn't need anyone to know him. He doesn't need fame. Was he bored? Was he lonely? Why did he create us so that we could know him? No, my dear brothers and sisters. He created a creation so that he may be known is also a giving of his grace and love. It is his lutf. He wants to be known so that you can benefit from that and experience the love of knowing him. The more you know him, the more conscious you become of him, the greater you feel his presence and everything else then falls away in terms of what we uh, uh, um, define as physical suffering. Allah also mentions many places in the Quran about coming to him and meeting him or attaining proximity to him. And by doing so, you get to know him. The question is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in a fixed location. So how do we come to know him and how do we come close to him? Consider, for example, every act of worship. Islam requires us, it is a prerequisite that any act of worship has to have an intention and that intention has to be qurbatan ilallah. If it is not qurbatan ilallah, it is not accepted. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it is wudu, salat, hajj, even charity, anything you do, mustahab, wajib, if it is not qurbatan ilallah, it is rejected. What does qurbatan ilallah mean? Seeking nearness to Allah. How do you seek nearness to one who is already closer to you than your jugular vein? He is closer to you than whatever can be closest to you. How do you get closer to him? Therefore, qurbatan ilallah is not a movement in time or space, but qurbatan ilallah is a movement in consciousness and awareness and knowing Allah. In Surah Al-Inshiqaq, he says, Ya ayyuhal insan, innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan famulaqih. O oh, human being, you are constantly toiling and struggling. You're not conscious of it, but you are. You are constantly toiling and struggling towards your sustainer with a severe toiling. And you will meet him. How does this liqa Allah happen? In Surah Al-Kahf, he says, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ So whoever hopes to meet Allah, to have this meeting with Allah, فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحَدًا Then let him act righteously and not associate anyone in the worship of his Lord. Whoever hopes to meet, to have this liqa Allah, how does this happen? Inna lillah, we belong to Allah. Wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. And to him we are constantly returning. How are you returning to him when he's already with you? You are returning to him meaning you are attaining greater consciousness of him. The greatest liqa, kaaba qawsayni aw adna, when you come absolutely close to Allah, is not a physical meeting. It is a complete suspension of the egoic self and a full view of the radiance and full magnificence of 
the one and only reality that is our creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is coming to this full consciousness. Istajibu lillahi wa lirrasul idha da'akum lima yuhyikum. Answer the call and invitation of Allah and his messenger when they invite you to that which will give you life. That means you are not alive right now. You are asleep. You are unconscious. When you attain full consciousness, that is when you come to life. That is when you wake up. Anasu niyamun. Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, says. People are asleep. They are in this world. They are producing children, going to work, eating, sleeping. But it's like they're on a stretcher, they're being carried. They're asleep. Anasu niyamun. Ida matu intabahu. When they die, they wake up. Why? Because when you die, the egoic self collapses. That sense of I, that false sense of I that your mind produced when you were born, it forcefully is snatched from you. What is painful about death is not the physical pain. It is losing that sense of I. So when you lose that, that's when you wake up and you realize there is only one reality and it is so beautiful. So the purpose of life, when we say the purpose of life is to know him and for the soul to mature, we mean it is to attain a state where we bask in the love of Allah, where we drown in his love. Where instead of being this small egoic self that feels suffering is real and says, why did Allah create me and I suffer so much? We feel the warmth and tremendous love of a magnificent Lord and we feel this deep sense of indebtedness and humility that he created us that we may feel this presence and love. That is why you see a mystic never asks, why did Allah create me? And now I suffer. 